Hey, my fellow screenwriting enthusiasts, it's Paul from Small Town Movie Critic. Now, if you're new to the channel, we're all about helping you write that kick-ass screenplay by giving you tips, tools, inspiration, and of course, product reviews. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be showing you in our series on how the words on the page look on the silver screen. Now, the movie we're gonna be looking at today in today's video is a 2007 classic, No Country for Old Men, written by the Coen brothers and starring Tommy Lee Jones, Javier Bardem, and Josh Brolin. Now, more specifically, we're gonna be to look at the, the iconic scene where the Anton Chiguer, played by Javier Bardem, Bardem, goes into a roadside gas station and talks with, with the owner, played by Gene Jones. Now, by studying this scene, we're going to be learning three valuable lessons. The first lesson is we're going to be learning about the concept of setup and payoff. The second concept we're going to learn about is fulfilling and exceeding the promises that your movie lays out or your script lays out. And the third thing we're going to do is, is we're going to learn how to write a scene that's laced with tension. And as I do uh, every time, I will always link the YouTube video in the description as well as the copy of the script for you as well. Now, if you're following along in the script, we're going to be starting at the bottom of page 18 and, and we'll end up on the top of page 24. So it's about five to six pages of script. Um, and we'll find out that that turns out to about a little under five minutes of actual screen time. Now, unlike our last script, which I will link up in the description, where we start at the beginning of the movie, this is, a, this is about somewhere in the first third of the movie. Now, because of that fact, there are two concepts we need to talk about prior before we dive into the scene. Uh, and the first uh, of these two concepts is that, that, that um, concept of setup and payoff. Now, you can think of setup as akin to foreshadowing. Uh, the definition of foreshadowing, uh, says Larry Brooks, who is the author of the story fix, is anything that links to or reveals a glimpse or hint of a forthcoming story point or issue of character characterization, but is not yet recognized by the reader as a salient story point itself at the moment of its revelation. Another way to think about that setup is that it lays the groundwork for scenes to follow. So understanding the definition of setup, we can see that the payoff is fulfilling what we've set up. It seems pretty logical, right? So this is important to do because I can't tell you how many movies I have seen where there's no setup for their payoff. And this could be frustrating as an audience member because it doesn't feel very fulfilling. And let me give you an example. So if you have a hero uh, who's a normal human being for almost all the, the, the movie, and they're suddenly trapped uh, in, on the top floor of a building which is on fire, and then suddenly they just jump off and they fly under their own power, you're in the audience member are like, what? How did that happen? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, since when does this ordinary person have extraordinary powers? And this is the problem with a lot of screenplays I've read and watched um, and on the screen is that they just deal with payoffs and there's no setups to, to make uh, what is happening logical or believable. Uh, so the scene that we're, that we're, we're seeing here today is a setup uh, for something that'll happen later in the movie. Um, that'll have an implication when Tommy Lee Jones comes in and finds a coin in Shiger's room. Uh, it, that gives us some payoff in some sense. Uh, so this scene is setting that up. Now, the second uh, concept we need to talk about is promise. So what is the movie promising? Now, every movie makes a promise, such as if, if it's a fantasy movie, we expect there to be fantasy elements like dragons, uh, knights, elves, or dwarves. Um, if it's a, a rom-com, we expect there to be some sort of dating or some uh, type of romantic interest. Uh, so what is one of the promises of Old Country? Uh, well, one of the main promises that we have is, uh, in terms of character, we have this promise of a villain who's pretty unstoppable and ruthless. And how do we know about that promise? And here's an important piece that many screenwriters forget to do. They don't show what this promise is. They just talk about it. Well, yeah, they, you know, um, they are the best Green Beret ever, or they were, you know, this, this, um, perfect violinist or they were the best dancer ever they, they people talk about it but they don't show it now in old country for, in, in old country the coen brothers show shiger killing a police officer as well as a random person driving his car so as the audience we have a promise that the villain is filled with a lot of violence um, and so what as we watch this scene too i want you to sort of to pay attention to the setup that's being set up with the coin 
and then sort of what the promise is with uh, Shiger is. Um, and I'm going to, what we want to do as a screenwriter is we actually want to surpass what people's expectations are of that promise. So the promise we have with Shiger is he's a very violent person. Um, and so there are certain expectations that we have coming into the scene. But the Coen brothers actually exceed that expectation even more, add to the tension of the movie um, by doing how they, how they write that scene. Uh, so, so knowing these two effects, let's dive deep into the scene and begin to see how this affects how we watch the scene and what we can learn for our own screenwriting. So we're going to uh, just dive into that first page, and then after that, we will watch the scene and see how things go. All right, so we're on page 18. Uh, we're going to start with the exterior shot. So exterior gas station grocery store, Sheffield Day. Uh, as, as again, notice uh, as we write that description, it's not a big description. Uh, as we see in the movie here after the shot, we'll see that there's a lot that we have to let the uh, production crew do. Uh, and so... Uh, so what you're doing as a screenwriter, again, is you're just giving you the feel. You're giving the production team a feel. Uh, so you're in an isolated, uh, dusty crossroad. It's twilight. And the Ford sedan that Shiger stopped is parked alongside the pump. So we don't have a big description of what the gas station grocery store looks like. Um, and, and so I think that's important to remember because you're not writing the novel. Again, screenwriting, we just want a nice, short description. And we let the production crew, because we're part of a team, remember? As a, as a screenwriter, you're part of a team. And you got to let the rest of your team figure that out. Um, and so then we skip to uh, the interior gas station grocery store day. Uh, and then we see Shiger uh, stands at the counter across from the from an elderly proprietor, and he holds up a bag of cashews. And so as we look through the, the dialogue right now, so so as we think about this, so the, some of the promises that we have in the movie right now is that Shiger is um, not that long ago. We just saw him kill the deputy as well as the uh, gentleman in the sedan. Uh, so we know he's a killer. And so this is part of that tension that we're writing. So we've sort of set that up too, that he is a killer. Um, and so this is where we have this dialogue. Um, and this is where, again, you can see where the actors earn their, their, their money for doing this. Um, because as we see here, the dialogue, um, as, and, as we, and we'll watch how the screenwriter uh, takes the dialogue uh, here and how the actors morph it into something that's even um, more tense. Uh, so we have the dog, Shiger, how much? And the proprietor, 69 cents. Uh, this and the gas. Uh, you all getting any rain up your way? And what would that be? I see you're from Dallas. So uh, so right here, so suddenly as a screenwriter, we're, we're creating tension because we also know that Shiger doesn't want people to know where he's at. So when the proprietor says, well, you're from Dallas, um, there's something that's, uh, Shiger is worried about, or Shiger has some concern about, because, okay, this guy could could identify him. Um, and then you also notice uh, throughout this, the, the, so so you don't see a lot of camera angles uh, right here. Um, and, and then what you do is the, the action that you're using uh, to make this scene tense, it's not very long. Uh, and, the, and the action helps break up so this, so you don't have a big block of text either. Um, and so uh, we see that Shiger opens the bag of cashews and pours a few into his hand. Um, and then you have this inter exchange with them again, um, where Shiger is getting uh, a little bit more upset um, with him. And the other thing you'll notice when we're on page 19 here is there, there's this thing called a beat. And a beat is basically a pause in the, in the, in 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 the dialogue. So as as we we'll, as we watch the scene, you'll see that pause when we see. I guess that passes for manners in your cracker view of things. Beat. So you have a pause where that line is supposed to set in for the act, the other actor, and for us as the audience, because we can see that the tension is suddenly getting higher, um, uh, and that Shiger is is figuring out if this guy is going to turn him in or what he should do with this guy. So, uh, so the proprietor says, well, sir, I apologize if you don't want to accept that. I don't know what else I can do for you. Uh, and then you can see how uncomfortable the screenwriter is, is showing us that what's going on. Um, because she just stands chewing cashews, staring while the old man works the register and puts change on the counter. Um, and so let's take a look at that scene. 
uh, and see. Uh, so we'll we'll stop at. Um, will there be something else? I don't know. Will there be? And we'll see that we'll have that beat, and then the protiver will cough, and uh, Shiger will stare, and then is something else wrong? Is something wrong? So we'll take a look at that. I'll be uh, this next scene here. How much? 69, see? And the gas. Y'all getting any rain up here, way? What way would that be? I seen you was from Dallas. What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? Friendo? I didn't mean nothing by it. it. Didn't mean nothing. I was just passing the time. You don't want to accept that. I don't know what else I can do for you. Will there be something else? I don't know. Will there? <clears throat> Is something wrong? I just love that scene and how it's written so far. And you can really see how the actors are doing those subtle things, um, like Gene, who plays the proprietor or the owner of the gas station, just sort of looks in disbelief um, when Shiger starts sort of ramping up his, um, you know, what businesses of yours where I'm from, friendo. Uh, and the proprietor is just sort of like, he just sort of like, what? You, you can just sort of see that in his body, um, his body language and stuff like that. I think that just was really neat. Uh, so, so you have that tension on on screen coming across uh, from the actors' performances, from their body languages, and just the way that they're saying their lines. Um, and so we stop with the proprietor turns and cough and Shigeru stares. Uh, and so we're going to look at the next uh, couple of lines here. So we stop with the proprietor turns and coughs and Shiger stares. So, so what you're doing there as a screenwriter is you're sort of building the action that you're, you're, you're using uh, is this subtle stuff in order to create this tension that you're doing. Uh, the proprietor turns and coughs, Shiger stares. There's not a long line of actions, but what you're doing is you're breaking up the text for the reader as well. And on screen, that physical action again helps bring tension to the moment right now. Uh, and then we see the tension as the tension increased. The proprietor is something wrong with what? With anything. The other thing you're noticing about this dialogue too is that it's really short and sweet. There's not a long line where is something wrong? Did I say something wrong? You know, there's not this, um, the, the words that were being used are very maximized. So when you think of your dialogue too, what it needs to be said uh, and, and don't overthink it and don't write too much dialogue with that. So I think that's an important part that we're seeing as we read this particular text with tension is there's a lot of boom, 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 boom. There's not a lot of long dialogue. As we look on page 19, most of it's just one one line. Uh, as we as we jump into the next part, is something wrong? Question mark. Uh, Shiger, with what? Proprietor, with anything. Uh, and, and, and we see this continuously down the page where it's just like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and so that I think as well is ramping up the tension for this particular scene because we know as a promise from beforehand, we've seen what Shiger is capable of. And so we as the audience members are like, uh-oh, here we go. What's happening? What's ha we've seen the burst of violence that he's had. So, so as, we, as we look through this. Um, and you can, so we do see in the line that uh, as we look a little lower on uh, 19, the proprietor looks at him at, at Shiger uncomfortably, uh, looks away. Uh, and so we know uh, from the uh, action part of the script that the proprietor is worried about what's going on. And let's see how he sort of, um, how do we capture that in words? And how do we capture that in dialogue? And so if we look at the bottom part, it says, well, I need to see about closing. And Shiger, um, so, so what the, the proprietor is doing is he's saying, well, he's he's uncomfortable, and he says, I need to, to, to in order to end the interaction with Shiger, he's saying, well, I'm just going to close up the shop, and you need to leave because uh, I'm closing. He's saying that, those words, without really saying that. Um, and Shiger calls his bluff, and so uh, the proprietor is trying to get himself out, verbally trying to get himself out of this situation, but Shiger is staying with him. And so it's interesting as we read the dialogue, 
C about closing. The proprietor, yes, sir. Well, what time do you close? The proprietor, seeing that his bluff has been called, is doesn't know how to answer that. Well, now we close now. Um, and Shiger, again, we're ramping that tension up. He doesn't believe what's going on. He's going to get what he wants to get. Um, and says, now is not a time. What time do you close? Generally around dark, after dark. Um, and then to keep that tension going for us, the reader, you have a line of action. And what does that line of action do? It doesn't really help resolve the situation, does it? Shiger stares slowly, chewing. So there's not any... So, so us as a reader, we're still in that tension-filled mode because we don't know what's going to happen next. The action line doesn't really help us. It, it sustains that tension that we're seeing throughout the text. And again, we see that uh, through the rest of the action lines for this particular page on page 20, um, where Shiger chooses or chews some more. Again, it breaks up sort of the lines. So to say, well, you don't know what you're talking about, do you? Shiger says, proprietor, sir. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. And then we have the action line that uh, Shiger chooses. So again, we have this sort of tension in there that Shiger is going to get what Shiger wants. Um, and it's uncomfortable for us as the audience. Um, and it's an uncomfortable for us as the reader as well, too. Uh, and so uh, so let's go down there. Uh, let's watch the, the, the scene up to this point, and we'll see how that feels to us as the uh, movie viewer as well too. So let's take a look and see how those words are represented on the screen. If you don't want to accept that, I don't know what else I can do for you. Will there be something else? I don't know. Will there? <clears throat> Is something wrong? With what? With anything. Is that what you're asking me? Is there something wrong with anything? Will there be anything else? You already asked me that. Uh, well, I need to see about closing then. See about closing? Yes, sir. What time do you close? Now. We close now. Now is not a time. What time do you close? Generally around dark. At dark. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Sir? I said... You don't know what you're talking about. All right, so um, so that scene, like I said, so so we're building the tension up, um, and so one of the other things I want you to notice about the dialogue as we've been writing the as we've been reading the dialogue and looking at the dialogue and seeing how that compares on screen. Notice there's not a lot of parentheticals, meaning there's a lot of brackets saying, "Well, he smiles," or "He says angrily," or anything like that. We're just letting the actors act, and the actors are doing a fantastic job of doing the lines and and you'd also notice that the volume of the lines there's not a lot of um, raising and lowering of of pitches there's not they're not screaming at each other when they're doing this but it's very soft um, it's very casual it's almost like a whisper I had to turn the volume up a little bit because I noticed you can sometimes it, it's hard you want to lean in with the scene um, as they're as they're speaking the lines because you can barely hear what they're saying um, and so again, there's not a lot of parentheticals with this, so you're not seeing a lot of um, he says angrily or something like that. And so I point that out because in this scene that we're going to watch here in a second, um, Shiger says, you're a bit deaf, aren't you? I said, what time do you go to bed? Uh, and we don't have any intonation with that, but you'll see that um, Javier, ben, uh, Javier does a great job of, of giving us how that line should sound. So, so we'll go through this right now and uh, again as we as we look at the action the action is just really he continues to stare he's chewing a beat so we're not getting a lot of relief from this tension this is very uncomfortable for us and as we watch the scene we know it's uncomfortable because Shiger starts talking about where does he live at um, and promising to come back and you're just like you know the promise from earlier that he's a killer he would he would do this i mean he would gladly come over and and kill this this man and his whole family uh for no reason just for but just for asking a a question about um you know how was the rain in dallas uh the interesting thing is here is we sort of see a switch in the conversation though after shiger asks you've lived here all your life 
uh, and this is my wife's family place originally. Oh, you married into it. Uh, and then the proprietor uh, and Shigera talk a little bit uh, uh, more about the fact that he um, has uh, moved here because of his wife. Uh, and so this also sort of reveals uh, a little uh, characterization around Shigera and how he views life and how he uh, sort of practices his violence. And so uh, we've known that he's been a ruthless killer, but now we're seeing a new sort of uh, way that he sort of figures out his morality, how he goes about killing people. And so so that promise that we had that he's an assassin, he's full of violence, has actually sort of been changed a little bit. We have an improvement upon that. We have um, something that we as the audience members weren't expecting. We were expecting him just to pull out a gun right now and shoot the proprietor and the scene would be over. But the scene isn't over yet. We're still working on that scene. Um, and so we're going to start or we're going to end. We're going to watch the, the scene up until this point. Again, as the audience member, um, I, I think you'll, you'll begin to see a little bit more uh, and feel that, that tension again. And again, listen, There's if, if we listen to the scene too, there's not a lot of background music. You hear a little bit of wind blowing uh, and just watch and let the actors just sort of just absorb how the actors are saying the words. Uh, because I think uh, so many times, and you can go back through and, and pause the video, and you can, or if you have the script, you can read the script as you watch this. So uh, we're going to uh, finish, or I'll, I'll come back to you again after we get to the part, which is the longest part of dialogue. He finishes the cashews and wads the pack and sets it on the counter where it begins to slowly unclink. And the proprietor's eyes have tracked the packet, and Shigeru's eyes stay on the proprietor. Uh, so this is the longest, as you know, it's the longest bit of action dialogue. And so it gives us a little bit of a uh, break from our tension. But then the next scene will just run us right back into that tension. So you have, so as you're having tension-filled scenes too, you need to have some release, a little bit of release of the tension. Or else if you don't have a release in tension, a little bit of tension, uh, people are getting so uncomfortable they might laugh. Uh, so... So, so the reason why you see this in the screenwriting is you're giving people a little, you're letting out a little bit of the tension, but not really. So, so let's take a look on the screen and see how that looks. You're a bit, uh, Faranja. I said, what time do you go to bed? Oh, somewhere around 9.30, I'd, I'd say around 9.30. I could come back then. Why would you be coming back? We'll be closed. Yeah, you said that. Well, I got to close now. You live in that house out back? Yes, I do. You lived here all your life? This is my wife's father's place uh, originally. <laughs> you married into it? We lived in Temple, Texas for many years. Raised a family there in Temple. We come out here about four years ago. You married into it. That's the way you want to put it. Well, I don't have somewhere to put it. That's the way it is. Well, that was intense, wasn't it? And as we see, you have that slow um, unrolling of the of the packet of the cashews on the counter. Uh, and just hearing the noise, and you see that the, the gentleman's eyes is fixed on it. Um, and we all, as an audience, the Coen brothers have done a great job of creating such an uncomfortable feeling for us because with that uh, packet going forward, you sort of know we're in the, the home stretch here of this scene because something is going to happen. Something is expanding. Something um, uh, is going to happen. And this is where we get the famous scene where Shigeru talks about the coin toss. Uh, and again, look at how the dialogue is ripped on the page. Now, you'd, you'd seen before, we've had uh, sentences that were fairly short. Now we're going to be really short, really, really short. And again, we're building up the tension, building up the tension. Um, and so uh, so, we, so Shigeru talks about what's the most you've ever lost on a coin toss. Um, and he ends up tossing the coin and has it hidden under... Uh, he slaps it onto his forearm, but keeps it covered. Uh, in this particular scene, you'll see there's some variations in the scene. Uh, I think he just has it on the table covered with his hand. He doesn't put it on his his um, uh, forearm or anything like that, but he has it covered on the on the on the uh, uh, cabinet there. And and so so 
we know this is do or die right now. We know that the proprietor is either going to die or actually we don't know what's going to happen. We actually don't know what's going to happen. We're, we're thinking that, you know, but we know the worst possible case, right? From the promises before, um, Shiger is full of violence. And so we're expecting violence at any second here. And so look at the dialogue again and how short it gets. Um, so Shiger, call it. Call it, Briarder? Yes. For what? Just call it. Well, so so this particular point, we're like, okay, so there should be, um, as we look at uh, as this as a dialogue, um, we, we think, of, okay, well, this should be, this should be it. Just call it. And <laughs> what do the Cohen brothers do? They would give us more tension. They give us a lot more tension. So, because the proprietor could have just said tails. And that would be the end of the scene. But the Cohen brothers do something. They string that tension out a little bit more. They make it even more uncomfortable for us right now. Because now, and this is actually some of the longest pieces of dialogue that we'll see. Um, and the proprietor says, well, I need to know what we're calling for here. Um, and Shigeru, you need to call it. I can't call it for you. It won't be fair. It wouldn't be right. I didn't put anything up. Um, and Shigeru is like, yes, you did. You're putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. You know what You know what date is on this coin. Um, and so, again, what, we, what we're learning about right now is a little bit more about Shigeru and how he sees the universe around him. Um, and I really like this next line on page 23, uh, which talks about what year the coin is. It's from it's 1958, and it's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here, and it's either heads or tails, and you have to say it and call it. Um, and so what we're learning about right now for Shiger is sort of how he looks at, again, like I said, the world around him. And so I think it's very interesting. Um, and as a, as a dialogue piece, it, it's, it helps us as a reader see that there's some... Um, uh, inevitability to what's going to happen right now. So what's going to happen has been planned for the next 22 years. This is this has all been fated to happen this particular way. Um, and so again, that sort of, as we think of the dialogue, it sort of crescendos the dialogue up um, even more so that we know that, that Shiger is going to go through with whatever happens. So it reinforces the fact of whatever happens is going to happen. And in the midst of one of the longest pieces of dialogue, a long beat. So we'll see that on the screen. And again, that's helping us drink in that tension even more. Um, and then they lay it on one more layer thicker. Um, you know, they banter a, a little bit about what um, what they have to win or, or what does he have to win or lose. Um, and then finally, at the end of that, the proprietor says, all right, heads then. Um, and Shakir takes his hand away from the coin and turns his arm to look at it. He says, well done. Um, and that takes the tension out of the scene, right? You know, we're like, when we see that, you can you can feel yourself take a collective breath as you as as this happens. Um, and then it's also interesting, too, because they could have ended the scene right there. OK, so they could have ended the scene there. But why? Again, this gives us a more of um, so the tension of the scene is basically done in some respect. But what we're getting now, right now, with the rest of the dialogue, it gives us more information on who Shiger is. It tells us a little bit more about, um, uh, it gives us more character development of Shiger. So I think it's interesting that, again, you could have cut the scene off right here. But what as we look at this, this adds so much more to who Shiger is. Uh, and Shiger says, don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pockets. It's your lucky quarter. Um, and where would you have me put it? Well, anywhere, not in your pocket, or it'll get mixed in with the others and become just a coin, which it is. Um, and so that, again, it just is it's a nice touch for the scene because it still gives us that a feeling of dread, that feeling of darkness. So, it, um, because you could have known, we know what Shigeru could have done. So let's, uh, take a look at how that scene turns out. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss? I don't know. I couldn't say. Call it. Call it, yes. For what? Just call it. Well, we 
need to know what we're calling it for here. You need to call it. I can't call it for you. Well, it wouldn't be fair. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you did. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. And you have to say, call it. Well, look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything, call it. All right. Heads in. Well done. Don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pocket. It's your lucky quarter. Where do you want me to put it? Anywhere not in your pocket. Or it'll get mixed in with the others and become just a coin. Which it is. So that was a pretty neat scene. And like I said, I think it's interesting, again, you have the actors. Uh, this is, again, where they earn their paycheck. They are do a good job of... Uh, of tempoing that type of scene with the dialogue. Uh, and uh, one of the things I think is really neat is Javier and at the one of the, one of the last lines, which is here on 24, uh, anywhere not in your pocket or it'll get mixed in with the others and become just a coin. And in this and in the in the and in the, the movie we he, we see a pause, which it is. And you don't see that on the script, but I think it works so much better. And you also see that he's a little bit more playful at the end with the uh, proprietor which again we don't read into that but uh, Javier does I mean and so you can sort of look at it from this is sort of like a, a predator playing with its prey and letting the prey go uh, and and I think that's neat that the actors are able to take the words on the page and have that type of playful uh, way of how they look at this piece of dialogue. Well, I hope you uh, I hope you learned a couple things for today. I hope that you saw sort of the setup and payoff. Uh, we see some setup and payoff. So this scene will actually pay off later on in the movie when Tommy Lee Jones will find a coin. And now we know what sort of the implications of that coin is um, because we know it's sort of that's Shiger. So if we hadn't had the scene when Tommy Lee Jones finds the coin later in the movie, it doesn't have as much significance to us. But now that coin is imbued with this setup before. We know that that coin sort of represents Shiger and what he is capable of. We also have promises in the movie. So we have promises that Shiger um, is a ruthless killer. But we learn more about Shiger in this scene. So we've actually uh, exceeded the audience's expectations. Shiger is just a not my, just not a mindless killer like we thought he could be, but he has a distinct way that uh, he processes the world and interacts with the world with his own moral system. Um, and so this scene really helps set that up, and it helps us sort of give us a better idea of who the character is. It sort of exceeds the um, audience's expectations of who Shiger is. And finally, in this uh, this bit of dialogue too, you can sort of see how you can create a tension-filled dialogue uh, with short words, with action that breaks up a little bit uh, of the dialogue, but not a ton of action. Uh, and you can sort of see how you can increase the tension of the scene by stringing it out a little bit more. Um, and But the, the danger in, in that, again, is you don't want to string out the tension too long or else people, you need some releases in uh, your dialogue as well too to give people a chance to sort of breathe, but you can continue to ratchet up that tension. So I hope uh, that this video was helpful in your own screenwriting and just sort of looking at this uh, great movie, uh, No Country for Old Men, and this particular iconic scene and why it works so well and why it is written so well. Well, if you found any value in this video, please like and subscribe. I try to put out content at least once a week. Uh, and as a screenwriter, I just ask you to keep writing. Uh, that's the hardest part of any screenwriting journey. So just keep writing, and I'll see you in the next video.